plan. Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center held a special recognition ceremony this week. More on that story in a moment. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, some MWR facilities have reopened. Military spouses needed to complete an employment survey. And more of our conversation with the Transportation Office and PCS season. These stories and more, but first, as I mentioned a moment ago, many post facilities are reopening with COVID transmission rates headed downward. Most of the facilities, like the pools and gyms, while open, will still have capacity limits in place. At this week's town hall, Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland talked about returning to health protection condition Alpha and a full that reopening. Said the decision to move from HPCon Bravo to HPCon Alpha uh, is really triggered by a case rate of below two cases over 100,000. Um, well, there is definitely potential we will get there. That is a very low bar. So um, just a little bit of expectation management. Things are looking really good right now. Um, but we're, we're still a, a significant ways away from HPCon Alpha. Uh, even though the numbers are very small, um, it's, it's really a, a, a level that is going to be challenging to get to. You can watch the town hall in its entirety on our Facebook page. Just click on videos. Elsewhere, in April, personnel at Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center discovered that 80 vials of COVID-19 vaccine had been improperly stored. As a result, approximately 800 people had to be contacted to readminister another dose. This week, General Paula Lodi, the commanding general at Atlantic Regional Health Command, stopped by Fort Meade to recognize nearly 20 Kimbrough employees for their efforts in the aftermath. What you all did for me and for the MedCom and for really the Department of Defense was show what right looked like in terms of how to approach transparent communication and corrective action safely and responsibly um, for the enterprise. Fort Meade Medic and Kimbrough Commander Colonel Tracy Michael talked about the impact of the revaccination effort. The real proof of your impact was the overwhelmingly positive response uh, that we received from our patients when we contacted them and over 90% of them agreeing to repeat the dose. I think that's pretty extraordinary given the circumstances and it's because of the care and professionalism that you exhibited uh, during this very, very trying time. In more health news, the next Fort Meade blood drive is scheduled for June 22nd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the McGill Training Center. You must make an appointment. Go to militarydonor.com and use sponsor code FTMead. Meanwhile, on our last show, we spoke with Jacqueline Sapp, the Installation Transportation Officer, about changes in PCS procedures. This week, we continue our conversation and the importance of attending a PCS briefing. We put out a lot of information, and it's a forum where we can answer questions, you know, or do specific questions uh, for, you know, unique moving uh, circumstances. So we encourage all of our customers, please attend the briefings because we go into detail about the spread dates. We go into detail about blackout dates. We go into details about, you know, the kind of do's and don'ts for international movements versus, you know, versus CONUS movement. So it's a really good brief, and it, it will, I think, alleviate a lot of stress. Ms. Sapp also wanted to remind everyone that although much of the process is done online, the Transportation Office still needs copies of your paperwork. Inside of DPS, you can upload your orders and your documents, but the system does not notify us. So we ask that you please provide us a copy of your orders. That lets us know that you have a shipment in. Because typically we have customers that will put a shipment in and they'll just sit and wait. Mm -hmm. And then a week prior to their move, they call us and say, hey, I, don't, I have not received a phone call. In other news, Army Community Service, Anne Arundel County and Howard County have partnered to publish a survey to get feedback on what the employment assistance and employment needs of active duty spouses are. The goal of the survey is to help develop strategies to improve job prospects for military spouses. All responses are confidential and the survey doesn't collect any identifying information. Finally this week, a couple of announcements from MWR. The big one this week, of course, is the reopening of the bowling center. Check out our Facebook page for hours and open bowling times. Club Meet is also reopening the Brass Lounge and Chesapeake Bars on Thursday and Friday evenings. You can also check their website for hours. A reminder, all military functions and private events must be reserved through the club and briefed at the weekly recovery review board. And one other note from MWR, Gaffney Jim wants you to be a member of the 500 and 1,000 pound clubs. To become a member, you have to do one squat, one bench press, and one deadlift with a total weight lifted of 500 pounds for women and 1,000 pounds for men. You can email Sylvia Garcia at Gaffney Gym to set up an appointment. Club members will receive a t-shirt and have their results posted on a special club board. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.